imaginations are at their strongest when we are children. Imagine if there was a way for children to come together and bring their imaginations to life while also learning important skills and trades. Barry News reporter Emma Golub tells us more about an event doing just that in Denver. Just three questions before we go. Audience, are you ready? Yeah! Ready. Appraisers, are you ready? We're flipping ready. ready. They're still flipping ready. All right, team, are you ready? Yes. yes. Yep. All right, your time starts now. Creativity. Is this Dr. Helios' office? Teamwork. Innovation. That's what these kids are mastering in an eight minute performance. Originally based out of New Jersey, Destination Imagination is a nonprofit with the mission of creating an environment for kids of all ages to explore science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, all on their own. Overall, it is a essentially a critical thinking competition. We at and each challenge focuses on a different aspect. So I'm in, uh, in fine arts. So we have fine arts, but we also have a technical aspect to it. They have to build something for a set. There's also an engineering challenge this year. They built a roller coaster. There is a scientific challenge, and the focus of that one was about scientific theories. There is a service learning. So they have to come up with something for community service. There is improv, which is thinking on the fly. So for kids that don't want to build sets. While Colorado boasts an impressive number of participants and teams, DI reaches far past just local and state competitions. Every year, it impacts more than 150,000 students in 42 states and 28 countries, all over six continents. Last year at Globals, we met people from Poland, South Korea, and we, I still have them on Snapchat and talk to them every once in a while. The impact of DI reaches adults as well, because you can join at any age as a volunteer or team manager and rediscover what it means to be a kid. <laughs> um, it is the best way for kids, I think, to express themselves. And it's outside of the... Um, educational parameters, but it still involves education, it involves research, it involves construction, it involves math, math, everything. Pins and merchandise sold at competitions is the main source of promotion for Destination Imagination and a large source of profit. My favorite thing is pin trading. Especially like when you go to Globals and stuff, there's a lot of different people from different states and pin trading is like a really good way to get out of your comfort zone and go meet those people. Even during the tense state competition in Denver, DI still encourages kids to be kids by providing bounce castles, food trucks, and escape rooms to pass the time. I feel like the most important part is teamwork. Yeah, team is teamwork, work. working with your team, because if you're not working with your team, like, first of all, that's not even called DI. You get good scholarships from it. There's a lot of stuff you can get out is meeting new friends. Only a handful of teams will qualify for the global competition. So for most, the season ends here. But they are sure to be back next year and more excited than ever to create something new. S-O-A-N-K. Slank! Hi-ho, off to work we go! <laughs> With Bear News, I'm Emma Golub. Thanks, Emma. The next Destination Imagination event in Denver should take place around this time next year. That's a cute dude, what's he doing? They've stolen the hearts of students and faculty. I love that humans love the squirrels. And occasionally steal food out of trash cans. Lauren Benedict is a biology professor here on campus, and she tells us a little more about these little guys on campus. So the squirrels that we have on campus are fox squirrels, and that's the, a very common species of squirrel. Colorado actually has a number of squirrel species, both tree squirrels that have the big fluffy tails, and then ground squirrels that are they look a little more like um, small prairie dogs, and prairie dogs themselves are actually squirrels. These little guys are actually the largest species of tree squirrel in North America. Fox squirrels that we have on campus are really good at living with humans. They're very much uh, adapted to our trash cans and human food that we leave behind, so you get a lot of fox squirrels living in places where people live. Their diet consists of nuts, fruits, insects, and your leftovers. Squirrels benefit from living with humans for sure in that they 
eat all of our food scraps and they get warmth from the buildings and the things that we've built in the area. And I think they give us some joy in return. <laughs> so there's that. There are probably some negative effects because just like a lot of the junk food you eat isn't great for you, it's probably not great for squirrels either. Some students on campus take their love to the next level. Holly Ackerman runs the Sexy Squirrels of UNCO Instagram page. Yeah, in no way, shape, or form are we attracted sexually to the squirrels, but you know, we love them. The story behind the Instagram page was simple, a love for these furry critters. There was one squirrel in particular by the Toby Kendall dining hall. He was eating a piece of pasta and I could hear him chewing the piece of pasta. Um, so I think that particular squirrel was like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta share these dudes with, with the world, the campus. Um, yeah, so the profile picture of sexy squirrels at UNCO is actually that particular squirrel eating a piece of pasta. Holly doesn't run the only UNC squirrel Instagram page. UNCO Squirrels is another Instagram page with their own passion. I, I think it's fun how often you'll see multiple squirrels just kind of chasing each other. Like they'll, they're social creatures and they'll like just hang out with each other. And you can see them playing their little games and, and looking in the trash for food. And I don't know, I think it's really fun. I think they're uh, more clever than people give them credit for. They're actually really smart and they're pretty much indestructible. There's a certain mythology around some of the squirrels on campus. Legends tell of a white-tailed squirrel on Central, a squirrel who, when seen, gives out good grades. Or maybe it's just a squirrel with a white tail. Some kind of weird abnormality in their color, their melanin genes. But what's really cool is that you can identify that one individual. And I guess people know it, or people love it because they know it's the same. The white-tailed squirrel might not grant you good grades, but studying will. So maybe take the time to get to know your other local squirrels. And I would bet that if you regularly have a squirrel outside your window and it kind of sits in the same place and eats something every day, that's going to be the same squirrel every day. So you, they are pretty predictable and they have little home ranges where they stay within their home range. And you can get to know your other individual squirrels in the area too. Squirrels have become a cultural icon on campus, bringing people a little more joy to the mundane. There's tons of evidence out there that nature brings people joy. And on campus, where there are a lot of paved walks and buildings and so on, squirrels are a little piece of nature that can bring us joy. Curious on how you can support your local fox squirrel population? I think the best thing that you can do to support the squirrels actually is to have lots of sort of natural areas around. Don't feed them necessarily. They can find their own food. You know, you don't really want to touch them. You don't want to get in super close contact with them. But as everyone knows, squirrels love acorns. And if you happen to snap a cute picture, maybe think about forwarding it to your local Instagram page. A yoga studio in downtown Greeley is moving locations. Bear News reporter Isabella Marcus Porter has all the details on what we can expect to see for this grand reopening. Are you fiending for some hot yoga, or maybe just looking for some new ways to exercise? Located on 8th Avenue, just across the street from the apartments at Maddie, is Bounce Movement. It's a yoga studio that will be opening its doors to its new location this upcoming April. Owner and instructor Heather Berry shared her excitement for the studio's future. The location that I'm currently in is a smaller location. It's about a thousand square feet, and it's been a great starter location. I can fit like 10 people after that it just is we're too close quarters to have a good experience so the studio is growing and i needed a larger location so my new location is 5,000 square feet so it's much bigger um, it also is just like that boutique studio feel we have an entrance you have your own locker room um, I'm not sharing the building with anybody. I'm currently sharing the building. So it's just our space and a much larger space. The yoga studio offers a variety of classes and welcomes everyone regardless of experience. Balanced Movement Yoga offers uh, several different types of yoga. We have two separate rooms. So we have our main studio, which is non-heated. So uh, we're gonna have non-heated yoga vinyasa yoga, which is a type of flow yoga. So you're going to be going from one posture to the next. We have restorative yoga, which is much more of a calming type of yoga. Wherever you are, there is something in yoga for every person. And it, it looks different for everybody, which 
makes me excited as a teacher because there's so much to learn and so much to give to every single person. Bowes Movement will be hosting a grand reopening open house on April 15th and 16th. Free classes all weekend long. So come in, you can see on our website the different um, types of yoga just to try out what yoga class feels great for you. But the new studio will not be up and running just yet. It'll be open to the public for classes on April 3rd. With Bear News, I'm Isabella Marcus Porter. Thanks, Isabella. For more information, you can check out the Balance Movement Facebook page or website. After years of hard work and research, students at UNC's Research Day were able to finally debut what they have been working on this past Thursday. Bear News reporter Will Coleman stopped by to learn more about the event. It's really to give a, a venue for students to come and present on the cool projects they're doing, but also for that student to then develop and grow and to get some new ideas, um, you know, some kind of new direction for what they're doing as well at times. Presenting findings to the public is an integral part of the job for researchers, but students don't often get the chance to practice as they move through their undergrad programs. That's where UNC Research Day comes in an annual event hosted by the Division for Undergraduate Academic Engagement to help students share their hard work and get comfortable giving scholarly presentations. Anytime people get in front of doing public speaking, it can feel stressful, but the more you do it, the less stressful it gets. And so we really want students, even at beginning stages of projects, even before maybe they've conducted research, but they're in the process of developing a research plan, come to Research Day that year and talk about what you're designing. The event featured oral presentations and poster sessions, allowing graduate and undergraduate students to showcase what they've been working on to the public and their peers. So I, I presented at Research Day last year. I volunteered at Research Day the year before, and now I'm presenting here again. So I think it's just a really interesting place to hear about what other people are interested in and what they've done research on or like what research they're helping out with. Showing, your, showing off your research and what you've done and how hard you worked on this and just having people interested in it is pretty cool. Research Day is open to any and all students and features a wide array of topics from different academic fields. I'm looking at emotion regulation as a mediator between a history of childhood maltreatment and present levels of self-compassion. So uh, my project is about female serial killers. Um, I saw one today that was about, um, you know, the Yampa River being a wild and scenic river. There was even an optional competition where participants were evaluated on the content and visual presentation of their projects. At the end of the day, though, organizers say UNC Research Day is about celebrating up-and-coming scholars and inspiring students to keep being curious about the world around them. Just by talking through what you're learning about, you're sharing it with a lot of other people who are now learning, and then through the question and answer phase, which is kind of an important component, you start to get new ideas, so it kind of starts to create new paths, and I've had many, many students tell me that after research day, they had like five, six new ideas of what they were going to do, and they'll get reinvigorated into their project. For Bear News, I'm Will Coleman. Thanks, Will. It is really cool to see what our fellow bears have been working on. Here at Bear News, we take a lot of pride in providing you with the news you want and need. But what exactly does that look like? Bear News reporter Jordan Stone went behind the scenes this week to show you a peek behind the curtains into Bear News. Five, four, three, Hello and welcome to Bear News. I'm Mia Olivas. And I'm Alani Cassiano. Bear News is a student-produced newscast for the University of Northern Colorado. A show comes out each Monday and Friday. Bear News provides news and information to the UNC community and helps journalism students get real-life experience with working in a newsroom. You don't get this type of lessons in many other classes where we're simulating a newsroom as best as we can in an academic environment. This semester, Emma Gollop is the news director for Bear News. Bear News is by far my favorite class I've ever taken. I don't even know if I would call it a class because it's such, it, it feels real and it's something I can put on my resume and have, you know, stuff to show for it. Um, but I, I do so much better in an environment like this where it's collaborative and teamwork and it's not solely based on like a lecture or tests or anything. So um, I just, I love Bear News. It's 
super, super fun. And it's really, I've learned so much more than I ever thought I would. Students usually pick a role of reporter, anchor, management role, or TriCaster operator at the beginning of each semester. Well, I volunteered for the position on the first day of class because nobody else was, but I had emailed Sean about it, um, or just about a management position prior, uh, because I'm really interested in doing that in general. And um, the job description sounded really interesting, and I, I really love helping people. and. I feel like I have some strengths in editing and kind of production side of things um, where I could be an asset to that. Most universities have a student produced newscast, but Sean speaks about how Bear News is different from others around the state. The overall showcase of what students can do in Bear News is better than any other newscast in Colorado. College newscast in Colorado. A typical Bear News episode includes a pre-show. A UNC criminal justice professor works to prepare his students to tackle racism within the justice system. Bear News starts now. A weather forecast. Friday with a high of 56 and mostly sunny conditions. But into this weekend, we will start to cool off just a little bit. And some banter with our anchors. You know, Mia, the droids are my favorite part of Star Wars. What about you? These aren't the droids you're looking for. Sean says he uses the four C's as a principle for the class. Critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. So they're doing all of these with doing projects together, even the newscast together, being as creative as they can, doing the newscast or creating the, the packages. So they're, they're learning, even though they really don't know they're learning. However, in August, when the fall semester starts, a new group of students will take over and begin creating new content for Bear News. I'm a little bit sad to be graduating in a month, but I am excited to go into the world where this class has prepared me for. Jordan Stone, reporting for Bear News. Thanks, Jordan. It takes a lot of people and hard work to bring together a broadcast. So thank you for watching and thank you to all the wonderful people behind the camera here at Bear News. Dressing up isn't just for Halloween. For many, it can be a year-round affair meant for self-expression and storytelling. Professor Thomas Andre spent last spring going to conventions and listening to cosplayers and the costuming community's stories. Bear News reporter Isabella Marcus Porter caught up with Professor Andres to talk about his research on cosplay. What started out as a short research article about the cosplay community quickly turned into a 16-month process and taking a sabbatical for writing a book about different costuming communities and their identities behind the mask. Professor Thomas Andres was inspired to look at costuming through a different lens after attending Comic-Cons with his daughters. Cosplay or other forms of costume like drag or professional wrestling outfits or roller derby outfits as an expression of who they are inside. Every time I would talk to a group of people, they would say, you know, you should talk to somebody over in the steampunk community. And so I would move over and start interviewing steampunks. And then they would tell me another community that I should learn about, and it, it started to grow. Andres has dabbled in the world of cosplay himself, dressing up as Batman and Ego from Guardians of the Galaxy for conventions. He wanted to hear others' stories and inspiration for why they cosplay. One of the first cosplayers he approached was Sam Nord. Well, one of my favorite stories is of Samantha Nord. Sam has a condition known as holt Orem syndrome, sometimes called heart-hand disease. In addition to having congenital heart disorder, her arms did not develop, so it's very much like her, her hands are coming directly out of her shoulders. And when I first met Sam, she was running by me at a con dressed in a Wonder Woman costume. Uh, with the bustier, I mean, and very sort of proudly displaying the strength of character, you know, dealing with her uh, level of disability in a very sort of proud and accomplished way. And I said, this is someone I have to talk to for my book. He traveled all over with his wife, going from cons in Denver to New York to California. He even found stories at conventions in Japan. His book is called My Costume, Myself, celebrating stories of cosplay and beyond. His book is slated to come out between late May and early June. With Bear News, I'm Isabella Marcus Porter. Thanks, Isabella. We often express ourselves through the clothes we wear, so it's really cool to see that idea turned up to 11 to show someone's interest. 
With spring just around the corner, a new drink spot has opened its doors for students to enjoy a nice cold beverage. Located just on the corner of 8th Ave and 17th Street is a new drink spot ready to serve up some slushies. Slushed is the new addition to the Greeley community, hoping to bring college students together for a good time. So Slushed is a new concept we came up with, um, slushy bar, full alcohol bar, but slushies. Um, we do it kind of Vegas style, so we have like fun disco ball cups and yardsticks, and then we have food and just like a fun hangout environment. While slushies may be the company's specialty, that is not the only thing that they offer. Um, we also have some smoothies um, made from slush and ice cream. They're still they're really good. We also have our wings and paninis. Paninis are only served till lunchtime. Um, they're really good. We have our caprice, the shoulder bacon, and the three cheese. Um, we do fries all the time. They're really good as well. And then we also do funnel cake fries and French toast sticks for morning time. Aside from the food and drink options, the drink bar also hosts many weekly events and offers entertainment like live music and streams sporting events daily. Yesterday night we did ladies night and that was you get a free 12 ounce drink with a purchase of any other drink um, for ladies. Um, we've done, we're thinking about doing like a Hawaiian theme here soon, a country theme where we're doing line dancing and we'll have it like up there on the screen. While the slushy bar has only been open for a short time, the store has big plans for its future. With the month just beginning, Slushed is looking to host many more events, including a March Madness bracket that anyone can participate in. Yes, so if you look over there, we have our March Madness board that we're going to do. Um, not entirely sure how we're doing tickets yet, but if you do win, you get like a gift card to here and uh, win a prize. We haven't really figured it out all the way yet, but yes, we will be streaming the games. We'll have a bracket set up, any kind of like, just so people can come in. Our employees will be dressed up with jerseys some of the time. So we're gonna try and like, um, get a lot of theme nights too, just so that bring more people in. And it is open to all ages during the day, but the drink bar is 21 and up after 8 p.m. Slushed is open from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. For more information about Slushed and their upcoming events, you can check out their Instagram at slushed underscore Greeley and their Facebook page at Slushed. With Bear News, I'm Taylor Rodriguez. Slushed and its employees are still getting their events set in stone. You can check out their social media pages for updates on their upcoming events.